Hey robot makers, do you want to know how to use Bluetooth on the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython? Then this is the show for you. Let's get started. So back in the middle of June this year, Raspberry Pi announced that the Bluetooth functionality is now available for Pico W. To get this new functionality, all we need to do is update the firmware on our Pico W. We can do that either using Thony or just by downloading the file from micropython.org and dragging that onto our Pico W from the Explorer or Finder window. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the Bluetooth basics. So what is Bluetooth? Bluetooth is a wireless communication technology used to exchange data over short distances. It was invented by Ericsson in 1989. It doesn't sound a long time ago to me, but it's uh, quite a while ago now. It was over 34 years ago as of the recording of this video and it was intended to replace RS-232 data cables to create wireless communication between devices. It operates between 2.4 and 2.485 gigahertz in the ISM band and it typically has a range of up to 100 meters. It's ideal for creating personal area networks for devices such as smartphones, PCs and peripherals and also controlling robots. And this piece of trivia there, the logo for Bluetooth is actually made up of two runic symbols because it's named after Harold Bluetooth. He was called Bluetooth because he had a dead tooth and uh, it was a uh, bluish in colour. So Harold Bluetooth H and B are two Nordic runes and added them together you get the Bluetooth logo. So let's have a look at Bluetooth profile. The first thing people think when they hear about Bluetooth is how do I get my remote control to work with some Raspberry Pi Pico devices, for example. Well, there's actually two different types of technology. There is the sort of classic Bluetooth, Bluetooth HID or human interface devices. And this is for things like keyboards, mice, and game controllers. And it allows users to control functionality of their device from another device over Bluetooth. And when coding, you're essentially transferring those keystrokes, mouth movements over Bluetooth. And then the focus of today's session which is Bluetooth Low Energy which is a newer version of Bluetooth. It's a power efficient version as compared with the classic Bluetooth. It's designed for short bursts of long range radio connections. Ideal for Internet of Things applications where power consumption needs and we need to be kept to a minimum which is exactly what we are looking at when we look at battery powered robots. It operates in a different way compared to classic Bluetooth even though it shares the same spectrum and when coding we typically work with services and characteristics that allow for reading and writing of short pieces of data. So so services and characteristics we'll be having a look at in a minute. So let's have a look at the connection stages of Bluetooth. So Bluetooth goes through a series of different stages. First of all, we have advertising. So on the server, so in this case, I'm going to use a little Raspberry Pi Pico, which has a display pack from Pimroni on the front. I'm using this because it's got some nice little buttons. So what this is going to do, this is going to be the server and then the robot is going to be the client. So that's going to receive all these uh, communications and then act upon them. So on the server, we need to advertise that we have a service available. And on the client, we want to scan for that for any remote control nearby and then once it's found one we can then establish a connection. Now you don't have to pair these but you do have to find a device that you're looking for and then connect to it. So pairing is a bit more of an extended handshake, connection is more of a lightweight kind of link and on the Raspberry Pi Pico's implementation of Bluetooth in MicroPython you can have one connection at a time so you can't connect one remote to several robots for example. You'd need to have more devices to do that. After we've established a connection we can then do data transfer, we can send our up, down, left, right type commands to our robot. And then at the very end, after we've done with this, we can then disconnect. Or if there's an issue, say you walk too far away from your robot, so there's a, a larger distance between the transmitter and the receiver, the client and the server, it'll automatically disconnect. And we need to handle that in our code. Next up is GATS, generic attribute profiles. Bluetooth can be a bit of a complicated beast underneath, but we don't need to worry too much about this, but I'm just gonna tell you what these are just so that you understand. So Bluetooth generic attribute profiles, also known as GATS, are one of these foundational design requirements of how two devices talk to each other. That's quite a wordy way of saying, we need to establish some way of communicating between these two devices in a way that they both expect, and the profiles allow us to do that. So GAT is only used once we've established the communication so it's not used at the advertising and scanning stage. So we're going to have to use some different styles of programming than we've typically done on our projects to date and this is the difference between synchronized and asynchronous code. So synchronous code I think I just called it synchronized. Synchronous code is kind of regular programming. So when you think about your Python programs, your MicroPython programs, they are synchronous. And what that means is they're simple, predictable, easy to write and understand, and ideal for beginners or short tasks that don't require multitasking. They're sequential in execution, sometimes called procedural programming, and that means it's uh, very easy to debug because we, we can look through what the next line of code is, what the previous line of code is, and understand what's going on there. And task completion is completed by moving from one task to another and waiting for one to finish 
finished before we move to the next. That's called synchronous programming. Asynchronous programming is a bit more complicated than that. This is to do with non-blocking operations. We allow a program to do more than one thing at once. So it's a multitasking. It doesn't necessarily use different cores in the processor. MicroPython kernel can look at a synchronous code and essentially start and stop tasks or carry on with tasks depending on what their status is. So it's more of a cooperative multitasking than true multitasking. So it doesn't wait for a task to complete before moving on to the next one, which can improve efficiency, particularly when you're waiting for some input output to complete. It's also designed for event driven execution. So when you think about when we press a button on a keypad, what we want to do there is wait until that event occurs. And once that event occurs, act on a piece of code. So we want to handle that in some way. So ideal for handling interrupts, for handling events, especially in embedded systems where code can run in response to a specific trigger. So in our case, I'm going to have a piece of code that when you press a button, it will fire off that code to send that signal over Bluetooth to our robot. And our robot can then interpret that in a way that we wish it to like moving forward. And this means that it can be a lot more responsive. It has this re enhanced responsiveness. It's ideal for applications that require that high responsiveness, such as user interfaces, since it can continue to process other tasks in the background while waiting for that to happen. So rather than having to go around in a loop and test for each different button being pressed, we can simply just say, if this is pressed, then fire off that task. So choosing between the two asynchronous and synchronous depends on what you, your task is. And for BLE, we need to use asynchronous programming. We don't know when a signal is going to be received from our server to move the robot forward, left or right, and so on. And therefore we need to use asynchronous code to handle that, to catch that as it comes in. To use asynchronous coding in our programming, what we need to do is have three different commands. So there's an async, await, and run command. So the async command is used to declare a function as a coroutine. So rather than it just being a regular function, it's called a coroutine because it's a cooperative multitasking. So a keyword that's put in front of the usual def when we're defining a function. So the example there is async def my function, and it enables the await command. So you can only use await within a coroutine task, and you have to have one at the end, otherwise it will never complete. So await is kind of a way of saying wait for this to complete. So wait is used to pause the program and essentially hand back control to another code core routine task to carry on doing what it wants to do. A wait is used to pause the execution of the core routine until the task is completed and this allows other tasks to run in the meantime. So calling core routines we use simply just use the await like await my function. Awaitable object means that you can only use the await in an awaitable object which is a core routine and task that has that async def my function for example. We'll have a look at this in the examples a bit later on. So if you like what I do, please give this video a like, drop me a comment, let me know if you're going to build any projects with Bluetooth and specifically what kind of projects you're going to build with Bluetooth. I'd really love to know. And if you've not already subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the little bell and the notification. Most of the people that watch this video aren't subscribed. Don't be one of those. Be one of the people that subscribe and help me grow my channel. It really does help. I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time or British Summer Time, which is just GMT plus one, depending what time of year it is. So I'll be going live this Sunday, 7 o'clock UK local time. OK, so once we've done our async and our await, at the very bottom of our program, we need to have some kind of way of starting up that whole asynchronous programming loop. And the way that we do that is we have a special event loop that's called run. The run function starts the event loop, which is necessary for that asynchronous code to run. And in MicroPython, you use a library like micro async IO to provide that functionality. And that's what we'll be using in our robot code today. So running tasks, we have to do things like uasync io dot run. And we can also create tasks and that's what we're going to do in our code. We're going to create a series of about two or three different tasks and then we're going to pass those tasks lists to the run function and then the run loop will handle all those uh, those code routines. Run is essential because top level await statements are not allowed. You can't use await outside of the async function so they all have to be within it. Again makes sense when we can show you some code. So writing asynchronous code, remember the goal of async await is to write non-blocking code. And what we mean by blocking code, say we had something that takes five minutes to go and process or do, that's going to block any other piece of code from running. We don't want that to happen. So non-blocking code means that the operations that block things like input output are ideally coded with async and await. So we can handle them and have the tasks elsewhere carry on doing things. 
kind of using my hands to demonstrate this and you can't see it. Nested coroutines, you can have coroutines that have other coroutines. Always remember to use the await keyword when calling a coroutine from another coroutine. And exception handling, you can use regular try except blocks to handle exceptions within a sync functions. But remember that exceptions may affect other tasks running in the event loop. We do use the try except blocks in our code as well because there's quite a few different things that we need to handle such as the disconnect we talked about earlier. Okay, BLE characteristics and services. So a service is kind of the collection of related and associated behaviors that accomplish a particular function or feature of a device. It's a way to group together pieces of information together. So for example, the heart rate monitor that we say here, there's a heart rate service that runs on our fitness tracker and that groups together all the data and behaviors related to measuring heart rate, heartbeat, heart blood pressure, that kind of thing. From a BLE characteristics perspective, characteristics are the individual data points within that service so the heart rate for example the uh, location on where on the body where the center is all those are individual data points and we can have those as specific characteristics there's a whole bunch of standards that are defined by the bluetooth group for what each one of these is now if you wanted to create something commercially you probably have to look up what's the closest characteristic code for what you've designed in however you don't have to stick with these if you don't want to if it's just for a robotics project you can kind of as long as you use a characteristic number doesn't matter what that number is we can reuse any of the different types so we're going to use one today that's roughly a remote control type and these are hierarchical so we can have our bluetooth device that has several services in it we're going to build two services into our uh, remote control we're going to have some device information that's got things like the firmware version the unique id of this particular pico and then we're going to have another service which does all the control stuff so together services and characteristics form a hierarchical structure a ble device can have multiple services and each can have multiple characteristics and this organized structure allows for other devices to discover and understand the data being offered by the BLE device facilitating seamless and meaningful communication and remember both of these services and characteristics are identified by a UUID which is a universally unique ID allowing them the devices to recognize and interact with them and this is what these codes are that the Bluetooth organization have put together in endless tables honestly it's a it three or four hundred page document that lists out all the individual UUIDs and some UUIDs are standard as defined by this Bluetooth special interest group for common services and characteristics while custom ones can be defined for unique applications like ours. So how do we actually send the data using these characteristics? So individual data points have a characteristic type such as button, temperature center, etc. And they can also have an encoded payload, which is just data that you want to send and receive. And it's just represented in bytes. So we can encode and decode that if it's more complicated. I'm simply going to send single characters like up, down, so be U and D, L and R for left and right. And that's all I'm going to send. So I don't really need to encode and decode that. We can send that quite simply. And then the data is decoded on the receiving device. So let's get over to our demo, build some code and make some robots work with Bluetooth. So over here on the bench, I've got a couple of components I'm going to use to build this robot. So this is a burger bot, as I call it. Burger bots are round in shape. They have a Raspberry Pi Pico. And they also have a Pimeroni motor shim on board and also a Pico LiPo to connect to a LiPo battery as well. So on this one, I can show you on the overhead here. You can see that the LiPo battery sits at the back there, connects into either a LiPo shim or I've got one of these LiPo Amigo Pros here. This just means I can charge it while I'm also using it. And you can see though that we've got the, the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's got the motor shim on there. The motor shim is a bit easier to see if I show you on this one here because it's sat right on the top. And it simply allows two motors of a left and right, motor one, motor two. And the motors in there are simply connected. Here's another one I made earlier using these motor shims. So it's a motor that's got a little connector on and then you can just connect a wire between that and the motor shim and away you go. So if you want to know how to build your own burger bot, I have done some videos on this previously. So I'll put a link up in the description up there so you can get a link to how to build your own burger bot. And what we're simply going to do is write some code that will enable us to control this robot using this Raspberry Pi Pico. So this Raspberry Pi Pico is using a Pimroni Display Pack 2. This is a Display Pack 2. So it's got some headers there and we just push the Pico onto the, the headers and away we go. So here's one I prepared earlier. I'm simply going to use the A, B, X and Y buttons as a forward, backwards, left and right. And we might even write some code to display something on this nice screen as well. And that's all we're going to do. Okay. So 
so over here I'm going to write the code using Visual Studio. I find it's a lot easier to write code in Visual Studio. I'm also using the uh, the functionality such as this uh, Copilot down here and Copilot helps you write code. It will suggest code for you. That's a, an extra paid service but uh, I quite like that. Right so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a new file. Let's call this one remote control.py and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is import sys. Sys um, allows us to access some of the hardware and system information of our uh, MicroPython device. I'm going to use this to grab a unique ID of this particular board. We also need to import AI BLE, which is a synchronous BLE. Uh, we're going to import Bluetooth. So let's import Bluetooth. Now, if you try and use Bluetooth and you haven't got this available, it says module not found, you're not using the updated firmware and you need to go to micropython.org to grab the latest version. Or if you want to use Thony, you can use that instead and just install the latest version. So next we need to import a machine because we're going to use some pins on the machine. We're also going to import uasync IO as a sync IO. We're also going to use some constants as well. And we're also going to import from Pimroni the button function because we want to be to capture those a b uh, up down left right kind of buttons now i want to be able to provide a unique id and just have a little help function to do this so i'm going to say define uid and then what i'm going to do next is type in this code <laughs> so this is why i've got github copilot's helping me type out some of this so this is going to return a unique id of the, uh, the device as a string and what are these squiggly colon o 2 x all these things, these are formatting options and it's essentially saying just provide this as a unique string. So it's going to format that and then return that value as a string. Next, we're going to set up some constants. So the first one is the manufacturer ID. These are going to be characteristics that we're going to provide as part of one of the services, the device info service. So that's value there 02A29. That's one of the Bluetooth organization's um, predefined characteristic types, the GAT types for manufacturer ID. So we're going to Type in a couple more of these. We've got model number, we have serial number, we have hardware revision number, and we also have the BLE version as well. Next up, I'm going to create some variables, four variables, one for each of the buttons. And this is using the Pimeroni's batteries included button function for the display pack two. These numbers here, 12, 13, 14, 15, they're the GPIO pins on the Pico each button corresponds to. Next, we want to have a, a nice little LED that can flash. So the onboard LED, uh, which is, used to be pin 20, on the Pico and on the Pico W you can actually just say pin and then in speech marks or quote marks capitals LED uh, and set that to machine dot pin out because we want it to be an output and we're going to use this to flash on and off our LED on board our MicroPython board and we're going to flash it quickly if nothing's connected and then slowly if something's connected so just by looking at it we can see what state the board is in. Okay, next up, we're going to create some more variables. These are going to be the, the various UUIDs that we need to use. So let's create one. Let's call it generic. Generic, I should say. And this one is going to equal Bluetooth.UUID. And then we need to pass in this UUID. So 1848. So the 0x means that this is a hexadecimal value. And we're going to have another one, which is the button. So let's do button UUID. And that's, again, equal to Bluetooth. I've got to make sure these are correct because on the other code which we're going to create for the, the actual robot, these need to, to match. Okay, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to create a BLE appearance. So next up, we need to have an advertising frequently. This is how long we wait before we time out on our advertising stage. So let's say interval in milliseconds it is going to be 250,000. And then let's set the device info to equal. And this is where we create the actual service. So, so I'm going to change that number up there actually to be okay. And then we're going to say connection equals none. So to begin with, we've got no connection. Let's create the characteristics for the device info and then AIOBLE dot characteristic. Now let's create one. So device info is where is the name of the service that we've created. And then we want to create another Bluetooth UUID manufacturer ID. We then say we can read this value. So that's true. And then the initial value is what we want to call our device. So this is, we can create what manufacturer our device is. So I can say Kev's Robots. Okay, next up, we want to create um, a couple of other things. We need the model number, so we can have that there. Let me just close that out so we've got a bit more space to work with. I'm gonna say that this is the model number. So let's have the initial value to be 1.0. We're then going to have the serial number. And this is where we use 
use that UUID function helper function that we created up here we can actually pass in that as the initial value so whatever that unique id is for our specific board and that means it's unique across every uh, board that there could be and then let's also include in here the system version so let's do hardware revision so instead of saying initial zero let's say sys.version and then finally let's have one more which is the bluetooth ble version that we're using so let's just have uh, initial 1.0 for that as well so th these aren't real values that are being used by a, a commercial device this is just us playing with it to show you how you can actually investigate this okay so let's create the remote service now so remote service equals service generic and let's then create a button characteristic and we can do that by creating a, the characteristic let's just uh, make our code a bit better there. So we're passing in the remote service that we've created there. The button ID that we've created further up, we say notify is true, and we're also gonna say read equals true as well. So at this point, I like to create a little um, print statement so that we can see that this uh, code is working. So I'm gonna say registering services, and then what we're gonna then do is do AIBLE dot register services and we can register both of them we can register the remote service as well as the device service we just pass in both of those two services we've created so now we'll say connected equals false we can use this connected to drive our blinking rate later on we can use that as a flag so we're going to create our first async function now um, so we're going to create a task for handling the button presses so let's say async def and then let's call this remote task so to handle the remote control. So what we're going to do on here is we're going to have a while true loop. So we'll say while true, which means run forever. So if not connected, then print not connected. We'll get it to wait for one second and then continue means at this point in the loop, stop and then go back to the very beginning of this while true loop. So this piece of code will keep going round in a circle until connected is true. And that extra second wait there just means carry on doing everything else in the background, but just wait a second. Right, now what we can do is we can say button A, which we created further up, dot read. So if button A has been read, we can say print button A pressed, connection is, and then we can say connection. And if we put that little F at the very beginning of that, we can actually embed that variable within our string, which is quite a nice, healthy thing to do. Next, we can say button.characteristic, and then we can write this. This is the part where we actually send the command over Bluetooth to whatever device is listening to us. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say characteristic.write, and then we need to pass in a byte. So we use the B to indicate that this string that follows is actually a byte. And I'm simply gonna pass in the character A because it's the A button that's been pressed. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to uh, notify, and we can notify using the connection and again we're going to say byte and a so this we have to pass in the connection that we're using which is the connection is a variable that stores all the state of the connection and the the a is basically just a replica of that okay so that's everything that we need for the first button we just need to now do this for the other button so instead of doing another if statement i'll do an elif so this is an else if and the benefit of using else if rather than just having four if statements one for each button is if the first statement isn't true it immediately tests for the second immediately tests for the third as long as you've got this uh, this elif so if we do there button a uh, button b has been read we can then say button b has been pressed uh, we can write button b and we can notify button b as well and then we just need to do that for the x button and i'm just going to let uh, Copilot help me write this code out here. It's a little bit quicker to do that. And then finally, we'll have an else. So after all these elifs have been tested, if everything else, if none of the buttons have been pressed, we can have uh, a final state. So let's say button characteristic and let's have a kind of a default value that gets passed even if nobody's pressed anything now this isn't the best way of handling key presses a better more responsive way would be when you press the button down that fires an event when you let go of the button that also fires an event and that you can fire those off to your robot and it can handle both the key being pressed and the key being released and it just makes the whole motion smoother but for simplicity this is the simplest way to do it and we have got a loop where it has to test each of the button states as well so we're not really using that notify particularly well in this current piece of code but conceptually it's a lot easier for you to understand that right so that's going to send off uh, just an exclamation mark and what we're going to do now is just await so if we say await sync io sleep and we're going to sleep for 
10 milliseconds so it's a really quick sleep but it just means our, our loop has got some kind of pause in it. If we don't have an await in here of any time at all we're actually not allowing any time for any of the other background tasks to occur. So we do need to have some kind of wait in here but if the wait's too long on this one it'll wait an entire say if you put that as a thousand a thousand milliseconds being a second when you press a key it would only be responsive one second at a time so a 10 is 10 milliseconds is pretty responsive there okay so that's the first task the next one is going to be our peripheral task so let's say def define the peripheral task and what this is going to do this is going to handle the connection itself so let me just get rid of all that for a second so what we want to bring in so we do want to bring in connected and also connection and while true we can say connection so the first state we want this to be in connection is false sorry connected is false connected is our flag for our blink thing later on and then we're going to have another sync so this is kind of a um, within the sync we can have another um, a sync with a wait and this then says uh, a i o b l e dot advertise let's get rid of that and what we want to advertise now is the we want the wait time which we defined before the interval time we want to pass in the name so let's say that this is a uh, kev's robots it's cool when you see this uh, using another tool that's actually scanning your bluetooth network and then we're going to say the appearance is that appearance that we defined and then we need to say what the service is okay and then we can define that as connection so connection contains all that connectivity information so once that's done we can then say um, connected or connection from and then we can say connection dot device and that'll give us the information of which device is actually connected to it connected is true that's the flag that's going to make our blinking change the rate and then we can then say print uh, again this is just for debug uh, connected and then connected and that'll just give us the connected state as being true or false. We can then say await connection dot disconnected and then we can print at the end disconnected so it'll wait for that to occur and then it'll print out the disconnected message so that's our peripheral task that will handle all the connectivity and then we can now do our blink task so let's do a sync def blink task this one really brings it to life when the you've just got a single pico not doing very much so what we're going to say on here is this is going to blink uh, task to blink and we're going to create a variable that's just called toggle and we're going to set that to true to begin with and then we're going to say while true so this loop is going to also run forever and what we're going to do on here we're going to say led dot value that's going to be equal to toggle we're going to then, then going to say toggle not toggle so that will toggle the toggle also if it's true it'll become false if it's false it'll become true we're then going to set the blink rate to initially 1000 so that'll be one second and we're going to say if connected is true then we want to change the the blink rate to once every second else we want the blink rate to be I'm going to put a quarter of a second so it flashes pretty quickly. It'll turn on and off pretty quickly. And then finally, we can then blink whatever the blink rate is that we've just defined there. So it'll wait depending on whether it's connected or not at different times. And that's it. That's our blink task. All that remains now is to create our main function and then the run function. So let's create our async main. And we're going to create a tasks list here. And this is going to simply have a sync create a task which is the remote task create another one for the peripheral and then the last one for the blink task then what we're going to do is we're going to say await gather and tasks and that will gather all those tasks together start each one in the background and then wait until those tasks complete but because they're all running in a while true loop they will run forever and then finally we can just say a sync io run main which is this main function here and that's it that's our program for the remote control so we can upload this now uh, what i like to do is i like to upload this using thony so if i flick over to thony here uh, i load up the uh, the code that we've just created so ble remote and i call this one remote control so there's the code that we just created. If I now plug in our remote control, I'm going to plug this in and the moment of truth will our code actually work. So let me just hit the stop start button on there and then let's hit run with our code. So if I go back over here, I'm just going to hit run. Let's see if we've got any problems. So I just need to update that typo that I had there, which is on line 54. So I think it's register services like so. Let's try that again. Um, generic isn't defined and it's because it's underscore generic not just generic so let me just go and fix that one let's try that again there we go so so far it says not connected and it's registered the service and if i go back over to here and i flick this over you can see that the led is blinking 
and it's blinking quite fast because nothing is connected. So I'm just checking my reference code here. I'm just going to create an extra couple of things here. So I can do this in Thonny. It will update both Visual Studio and Thonny at the same time. So that's fine. So let's create another one in here and let's call this one and it's going to be simulate a UUID and I'm just going to change the number on that one to be 48. And what I think I need to do on there is just check which device info we are updating so the device info that one should be robot and then the other one which is the remote service should be generic so generic should be 448 and robot okay let me just stop that rerun it so to help troubleshoot i've downloaded an application that which is called blue utility uh, you can see a blue utility here uh, has a list of all the different uh, devices and the signal strength for them and if i run our code in the background let me just go over here and run this so that it's actually saying registered service not connected and if i get this uh, blue utility code up let's get this sort of side by side with the other code so now if i go and find kev's robots on here can you see we have kev's robots if i click on kev's robots we can see there connection from device public address connected connected and then if i click on the uh, 1848 which is the name of the service id we can click on the characteristic and this exclamation mark means that i'm currently not pressing any buttons so if i hold down i'm going to hold down the a button on here you can see there it says button a is pressed and if i click on read we might be able to capture there we go that there was a an a being pressed okay so we know that it's sending out bluetooth data we're actually receiving it on this mac and therefore we know that we're that things are actually working we now need to write some code for our robot to receive that the other thing i just wanted to point out as well was when we actually connect to this using this blue utility let me get this down here so we can see it uh, if we just disconnect for a second on our code it says not connect at the moment it registered the disconnect you can see the the blinking rate near my thumb there is flashing now watch this when I actually connect to it down here. If I click to connect to Kez Robots, can you see now that the connection, the light is flicking at a different rate because it's using that connected variable uh, to govern that. And then as soon as I disconnect and do something else, it'll go back to flashing at that different speed. So we can see there that we've got that nice indication just from the LED. So the other thing I need to do to make this run in the background, we need to save in Thonny uh, this to the Pico. So if we go to File, Save As, click on Raspberry Pi Pico, we can then save it as main.py. And main.py is a special name that's given to the code that will run when you first boot up your Pico. So if I now just connect this into some power, you can now see that that's uh, waiting to connect. And if I go to some test code that we're going to write in a second, just run this. I can now see that this actually does connect right so let's write this code in the robot so like before we need to import um, a couple of things before we start so we need to import uh, the bluetooth library for low energy we need to import the bluetooth itself let's import machine because we're going to connect to some hardware let's import ua sync io as a sync io and then i've created a special library for burgerbot which is simply called burgerbot and that contains all the different interactions with those motors from the motor shim from Pimeroni. Uh, and that means that we're able to sort of utilize that without having to worry about how to make our robot work behind the scenes. Right, so now we need to create um, a couple of those unique IDs. So what I'm gonna do is create an extra one and that's gonna be 18.00. And let's now do LED equals machine.pin. And that's gonna be the, the blink function. That's gonna help us with our blink function. We then need to do connected is false. I'll live is false we're going to use a live to help handle the connects and disconnects and we're actually going to create our robot here our burger bot as the variable bot and we're going to say bot dot stop just to make sure it doesn't roll off the desk when we very first initialize it okay we need to create something called find remote find remote is going to be another background task uh, the first background task and this is going to scan every five seconds to see is there anything available that we're looking for so we say sync with iobol.scan we then set the number of milliseconds 5000 the interval is 30,000, the window is 30,000, and active is true. We're going to save this as a scanner, and then we say wait for the results. So a sync for resulting scanner, so that's going to loop around for any results it finds, and that's essentially going to build out the list, very similar to this list here, of everything that's available in our personal area network. And what we 
want to do is look for the result name of anything that's called Kev's robots because that's the name that we gave our device. Once we've found that we can then say so if result.name brackets equals equals Kev's robots then print found Kev's robots and then for the items because we've got more than one service in there we have the device info service as well as the actual control of the robot service so we can say for item in result services print item and if generic which we've created up there is found in results.service then we can then say print found the robot service and then we can return that result dot device to the thing that's going to be calling it otherwise if we don't find anything we just say return none that's the first task the next task is going to be our blink one which we created before so we're going to turn our blink off on on uh, every couple of seconds so blink task has started we're going to say blink um, while true and alive so blink equals 250 the led value is going to be equal to whatever we toggle and we need to toggle that value after we've done it so we'll toggle equals not toggle we then say if connected blink is every second otherwise blink every quarter of a second and then we can then say print blink task has stopped because if we exit that while true loop because it's no longer alive then we can say the blink task has stopped so we need some way in our the, the very bottom of our code of having a while true loop to start all those tasks back up again so this can help us in a kind of fail safe point of view so next we need to have a function to move our robot so let's call it move robot and pass in a command and we're going to test for if command equals equals byte a so that's our up we can then say move the robot forward so bot dot forward and then this 0.1 is how long we're going to do this for so one being a second so 0.1 is 0.1 of a second a tenth of a second else if b has been pressed then move the robot backwards if x has been pressed then turn the robot left if y has been pressed then turn the robot right and that's it that's all we need to do for our move robot okay so we need the peripheral task again this is going to handle the uh, connection and disconnection so peripheral task and let's just say starting up the peripheral task we're going to bring in connected and alive so we use this global to bring in any global variable that we want to change the value of we can leave it out we didn't include that for example in our blink thing because we're not changing the value of alive but if we want to change the value of alive to say false or true then because it's a global variable we have to bring that one in using the global keyword okay next we're going to say connected equals false so we start off with a no connection at all we're going to say device equals and then await find remote so if device if not device so if the device is false then print no remote found we want to return return will exit out of this function so we need some way of starting that task back up which we'll look at later on and then we need a try accept block so try accept is a way of catching errors without the program crashing so the first thing i'm going to do is say print connecting to and then we can pass in the device and that will give us all the details of that and we can then say connection equals await device dot connect okay so if there's an error we can then catch that error by using the accept a sync io and we can specify exactly what kind of error we want to catch so we want to catch a timeout error so we can just say um something like that and then we return we can exit out of the function let's now do so in the in the case everything's worked okay let's say a sync with connection and then we can say print connected so we've connected to our bluetooth remote we can then say alive is true because we've connected and we can say connected is also true and then down here we can say robot service equals await connection dot service and then we can pass in that remote uuid that we created use that one and then we also want to create the uh, control characteristic as well so once we've got the characteristics and the service established we can then say while true and we can say try if remote service is none so if there's been some kind of problem it's probably a disconnect error we can say remote disconnected alive equals false and then we can then say break so break is different than return break will just break out of this while true loop um, so it'll go to whatever's beneath this while true loop but it won't actually exit out of this particular function so that's another way of uh, breaking out of a loop so let's have another timeout error so timeout during discovery service characteristics and again we can just say alive equals false that should be robot service not remote service there we go because it has to be the same as that um, and then once that's been captured we can then say so if everything at this point is still good we can then say if control characteristic is none so if there's a problem with that 
then there's no control so we can say no control um, alive is false and break and if all that's worked okay so there's been no effort errors we can then say data equals await control characteristics dot read and we can provide a timeout value in there for a sec for a whole second await control characteristics read what that is going to do is going to read from our bluetooth remote control what the value is and it's going to store it in data so we can now say await control characteristics and let's do a subscribe then notify equals true and then while true command equals await control characteristics notified and we can then move our robot using our move robot task and passing the command that been uh, the up down left right commands that we've been passed in there we can even print out what that command is if you want to see it and then we can do bot stop as well okay we can now capture any other exceptions so if we want to just say all exceptions we can say exceptions as e and then we can say something went wrong and then we can just pass in that e just make that an f string so that uh, we can embed the variable in it and we can then just say connection sorry connected equals false alive equals false and we can break out of that loop otherwise so at this point what we want to be able to do is just handle any kind of disconnection gracefully so await connection dot disconnected and we want to just print disconnected set alive to equal false and then we're done on that one so now we just need to create our our main function and a sync main function and we just need to create some tasks so tasks going to create an empty list there we're then going to say tasks equal and let's do a sync io create task blink task and also our peripheral task and then after this we just say await a sync io dot gather a tasks and then at the very bottom we just have a while true loop which will just run our sync io dot main dot run main oops sync io dot run main Okay, that's it. That's our code for the robot itself. So let's go back over to Thonny and let's just troubleshoot any issues that are in there. So first of all, no module named Ink.io. So we need to rename that as Sync.io. Let's try again. Okay, so we can see that it's flashing. And let me just try and change that to be 1848. See if that makes it work. There we go. So my remote control, if I go over to over here, you can see on the remote control that's now flashing steadily which means it's connected now it says here something went wrong the characteristic isn't defined so what we need to do is just switch around so i've just spotted a typo there just need to correct that i put an extra underscore in there which i didn't need to do so let me just fix that okay just one more character that i need to change there so it's timeout underscore ms let's try running that again Okay, so it's now receiving all those controls. Let's just stop that. So I've just been checking the codes. I think we just need to go through this just to make sure that they are aligned. So the robot code, which is running on our robot, we need to make sure we have the remote UUID as 1848 and the generic as 1800. These are the codes that are used to sort of pair the things together. And then on the other side, so if we just go to the remote control, similarly, they have to have, I've created a new one called device ID, uh, device info UUID. That's uh, 180A, generic is 1848, and robot is 1800. This 180A is kind of a separate one for the machine info. In fact, if we go over here and we go to just refresh that, we find Kev's robots on here. There it is. We get two services, one for the device info. And if we click on device info, we can see the manufacturer string, which is kevsrobots.com. We can see the model number. We can see the serial number, which is the UID that we found. And we can see the firmware version 3.4 MicroPython and the software version, version one, which we've defined. And then in the 1848, we have that 246E characteristic, and that's currently receiving that exclamation character, which means that our robot is sending data to us. Now, we do have to remember to disconnect from this uh, blue utility to make sure that we're not hogging that connection. And then if we go back and run our remote code, let's run this remote code. We can see it's not connected. Let's uh, restart our remote control. Running the wrong code there. Let's run the robot code on the robot. There we go. So it says... Robot found connecting to the uh, to the device and it's connected. Now the big test: if I press A, will it launch the robot forward? So let's put the robot there. 
I think I might have got my controls slightly the wrong way around. There we go. I'm going to disconnect this cable. Oh, before I disconnect the cable, I'm going to just stop that code. I'm going to save it as on the Pico main.py. So main.py will mean that it will run indefinitely on the Pico robot. Pico main.py overwrite it yes uploaded so now I can actually disconnect this robot from there I can power it up by pressing this little little button just inside there and now let's get our remote control I can see now it's doing a slow pulse on there which means if I now start pressing some of these buttons we now have a remote control Bluetooth robot there we go spin it round and so on. So now it's time for a quick word from our sponsors which is PCBWay. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, your ultimate destination for all things PCB manufacturing and assembly. Whether you're a hobbyist, a startup or a seasoned professional, PCBWay has got you covered. PCBWay offers an impressive range of services. They provide high quality custom designed printed circuit boards for any application you can imagine. From single layer to multi layer, flexible and even rigid flex PCBs, they have the expertise to bring your designs to life. PCBWay ensures fast turnaround times and affordable prices without compromising on quality. With their state-of-the-art facilities and advanced manufacturing techniques, they can handle small prototype orders up to large-scale production runs with equal precision and efficiency. PCBWay offers additional value-added services such as PCB assembly, component sourcing, and even functional testing. You can trust them to deliver the fully assembled and tested boards ready for integration into your projects. One of the best parts of PCBWay is their user-friendly online platform. It allows you to easily upload your designs, get instant quotes, and track the progress of your orders in real time. Plus, their dedicated customer support team are ready to assist you with any questions or concerns. So whether you're working on an innovative Internet of Things device, a robotics project, or anything in between, PCBWay is your go-to partner for reliable and affordable PCB manufacturing and assembly. Head over to PCBWay.com today and turn your ideas into reality. With PCBWay, your trusted PCB manufacturing and assembly partner. Thank you for that message. We have merch on our store now. So if you want to get one of these funky hats, you want to get the Kev's Robot mug or one of the t-shirts or hoodies, then head over to kevsrobots.com slash merch and you can help support the show there. If you haven't already joined us on Discord, we have a growing community on Discord. Head over to kevsrobots.com slash Discord to get the sign up link there. Completely free as well. No problems there. And if you want to help me grow on social media you can do this in a number of different ways if you go to uh, tiktok i'm kev mcalear6 on there on instagram i'm kev mcalear on t uh, twitter i am at kev's mac and on mastodon social i'm at kev's mac at mastodon.social and if you want to support the show in some other ways there's a couple of other ways you can do that too you can do a super thanks if you're watching this um on replay and you want to press the button underneath the main player in youtube there's a thanks button and uh, that's price of a coffee is a one-off thing if you want to buy me a physical coffee and i do like coffee then you can go to kevsrobots.com coffee and there's the uh, information there for that and of course you can always join the youtube membership program by clicking the join button at the bottom of the player as well just next to the subscribe buttons hint press that too and we have a number of supporters as well i want to give a shout out to so here are the, the supporters who've been supporting the show so far so we have buy me a coffee they actually bought me uh, 10 coffees uh, a couple of weeks ago we've got uh, day and court we have marlene brent john rank tom shemmy steve phillips and then on the membership side on youtube we have uh, johnny bates bill hoy oxrad 39 jose skipper banks jeff ford hands from chair lights michael and of course tom so thank you to everybody who's been uh, supporting the show i really appreciate that so i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to say short video this video and i shall see you next time bye for now